Welcome to the Urban Cowgirl Show. Well, we're going to do some more side saddle work with Eve. And we're directing this session, which is the beginning of part two, to Kira. Look at the end of part one, where we address Kira, who is uh, wheelchair bound when she's on the ground, but uh, did, uh, did manage to be able to ride astride. And she saw one of my videos from two years ago when I first got my side saddle. And she, uh, she said she was inspired by it and that she wanted to learn how to ride side saddle. So being that cow work is my favorite activity of all, and Eve is real good in the side saddle, being able to understand the cues of somebody who's riding side saddle, which means your right leg is not on the right side of the horse giving her cues. Well, I said, okay, I'm gonna show Kira how we practice cow work here, side saddle on Firecrest Easter Eve. And I'm gonna emphasize a few things about tack again. We generally, uh, for the right side, use a dressage whip. It's long, much longer than a crop. But unfortunately, this dressage whip I have has no handle like this crop does. So I made a little handle. Uh, actually, I put my finger in it. I don't wanna drop the whip accidentally. Uh, I do want to use it as an arm extension when I'm in the saddle. Well, today I'm ready to go in the saddle if I have to, but uh, my helper, Anyelle, who has never ridden side saddle but is very good at a stride saddle riding, is going to get up into the side saddle and get a feel for what it, whether she feels balanced. Uh, and then, and whether she can give Eve the cues that Eve is accustomed to having. Uh, mostly, Eve is very sensitive to just looking where you want to go. And uh, using your right and left reins appropriately. But in cow work, eventually, it's mostly balance. A little bit leg, and in side saddle, a little bit crop. Now, um, if my cameraman can turn around, uh, before Anyelle gets in the saddle, I'm going to show you how we're going to introduce Anyelle and Eve today to cow work. We're not using a simulator today. But to be very, very careful today, being that it's Danielle's first time, we put our portable panels across the center of my arena to make two halves. These are just portable panels with some inexpensive wheels that we attached with hardware we got from our local hardware store. And we park the portable panels back against the a perimeter fence of this arena when we're not using them. Now, uh, my cameraman is maybe going to zoom into the corner where I'm pointing. Uh, and if you don't see it right now, you will shortly because we'll be moving closer to this cross fence. There are my two heifers. And right behind them is the bull. Now we're letting the bull hang around the arena because he wants to be near his heifers. But we don't want to work him. He is a, a hormonal bull, and he kind of scares the horses. You need a very special horse to do cow work with bulls. But um, I wanted to let him hang around the arena. If he roars, if he bends down and puts his horns in the, the ground, the earth, if he paws, I want my horses to say, oh, that's OK. I'm not afraid. Because we are doing ranch horse versatility here. And you can't always control what animal is going to appear. Uh, you can't always be aware of what the natural uh, reaction the horse will have to any particular situation that they've not seen before or consider spooky. So we keep exposing them to spooky objects. Okay, let's go over here. And you're going to see Danielle for the first time. She hasn't done it before. She's going to talk to you tell you how she feels as she's doing it and this time I'm gonna stand at the head and notice we have a bozelle on Eve she's real good with it uh, the bozelle is about cor uh, correctly placed on the nose of the horse which is above the soft tissue and just at the tip or below the bony part of the nose and uh, I had no problem at all 
telling Eve what to do at the end of part one with her bozelle on. Okay, now I'm gonna hold Eve and uh, Anyel is going to get up the steps. There you go, she's using the barrel. We have a barrel that's half filled with water here, just so it's easier to get into the saddle. Now, how would you do it if you didn't have steps? Well, let's, uh, Anyel, keeping your right sits bone down, walk a little closer to the camera. And when you ask Eve to stop, good, good. And when you ask her to stop, do what you need to do when you're working a horse, whether it be with cows, raining or whatever, put your, sit on your pockets, both pockets. She'll understand that feeling. And you do have, let's go a little closer here, and look where you want to go first. And the um, right rein out if you want her to go to the right. Okay. We do have a left foot here in the stirrup. So we do have some leg pressure cues. But look, in a side saddle, the right foot is over this horn. So you don't have that cue. How do you feel about that? So how does it bit, feel up there? It's a little bit strange after 13 years of riding astride. Okay. It's uh, a little more balanced than I thought it would be. There's a little more support under my right side. Than yeah, I, there would be. I, I believe the saddle is built that yes. way. I got this saddle from somebody local here a couple years ago after I shopped around on the internet for quite a while. She brought it here to me. She didn't really know how to use it. She wasn't using it. It was a, a very good price and I decided I'd like to know how to use it. I want to use it. I don't know, uh, yeah, I'm 70 years old, I don't know whether riding a stride is gonna be the thing that I do for the rest of my life. I have had a left hip replacement, I'm in two weeks gonna have a right hip replacement, and then I'm hoping that both my legs will work like they used to work. But if not, I've got my side saddle, I've got my horse Firecrest Easter Eve, who's very trained, very well trained, to Bozell, side saddle, cues, it's just that Danielle has to understand what the cues are that Eve understands, and she has to feel comfortable in the side saddle. Now make a small circle to your right. Remember, look over your shoulder, make a small circle, keep that right sits bone down and back. Okay, I, I, one thing is wrong here, let me show you. Yeah, let me show you what's wrong, but thank goodness Eve is good. <laughs> yeah, you need to back. Back. Good, good, whoa. Okay, and here's what's wrong. But Eva's good about these things. She's my rope horse. Yeah, this thing her? is wrapping around her right leg. So you're gonna put it, what I did yesterday was I put it around my horn under mm -hmm. my leg. See, and Eve just, her head went up. She yeah. felt something different, but she's okay on different. She uh, has had a lot of obstacle work. She's a great trail horse. Got it? Okay, so you wanna keep this Makati rein Short. Handy, but short for now. Okay. And what is it? It's another way, another arm extension. And then you're going to keep this in your right hand. Now, when you normally in stride would want to give pressure here, okay, you have to kind of do it back here because there's too much cinch here. But she'll understand. She uh, She's good at side saddle work. She just, uh, every horse could be good, they just have to learn what the cues are. Okay, back up a little bit. Back. And make a back. small circle to the right, a small circle to the left. Good, and out goes your hand to show that you're going to the right. Remember always to look, because she feels it, yes. And she's real good at over the haunches. Whoa, good. Good. Come on back up to the camera, not too close. Mm -hmm. Tell us how you feel <laughs> after two circles. It's uh, very different going, the circle left is like, ah, leaning leaning into the circle. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Circle right is definitely more comfortable because uh -huh. you, you don't get pushed in. But Okay, if you sit a little bit more on your sits bone on okay. your right when you're going left, yeah. maybe you'll be able to maintain, mm -hmm. maintain that balance point. Yes, it's, it's all about balance. Constant brain work of, okay, lean back, yes, yeah, sit back, oh, stay balanced. Okay, now what I want you to do is uh, come closer to the cross fence. Okay. I'm going to go in and see if I can get the cows a little closer to you. Okay. But you're going to be on this side. Safety is always number one. My cameraman's going to turn around and come a little closer so that 
you can hear what we're saying. Just walk around now in a big circle. And if my cameraman can come closer. You'll see how I make uh, an entry for me right now. Just pushing on the wheels. Good, good. Now, you're not gonna come in yet. Okay, how do you feel now? Getting a little bit more comfortable. Okay, Kara, just make sure you do it safely and with helpers the first few times. And make sure your horse is accustomed to how it feels to have a rider in a side saddle on his or her back. Now I'm gonna move the heifers a little closer. The youngster, Sela, is more likely to move than her mom, Susie. But uh, I'll uh, let you, I'll, I'll use a loud voice so you can hear what I'm doing. watching them where she goes, but I think she's so used to them that she just knew. Right, do you feel? Now, eventually we'll do this with another person on the horse, probably me, but after I recuperate from my surgery, uh, to have a turn back horse rather than a turn back person. But I even have a whip uh, that I can use to move my cows. I don't whip them with it, I just make a noise. There are ways to move your cows for training purposes. Uh, and for practical purposes, if you're trying to move a herd, you need to know how the cow reacts to bigness, to sound, to body position, uh, to uh, even if we want to use a lunge whip or something to touch their hips. Okay, can I let you in? Sure. Okay. And wait till I make the hole big enough because she might come through and then feel the, the panel. Okay. Okay. Good. Now Rusty's out there. I'm pointing to him. You just heard him roar. Just walk up here. We're going to have Eve with Danielle in a side saddle walk up to the cows and investigate them. Now for the cow's sake, I on purpose am using Eve because a horse that doesn't quite understand these little mini cows could actually turn around and try to kick. That's their nature. And when Sadie, Eve's daughter, was very young, that in fact happened. That happened about three years ago. I have to come closer to the center here to get this panel to come back. Here, 
here it goes. The arena is flat, but not exactly level. Okay, good. Now I will tell you what Danielle is saying, if anything, because she's got to concentrate on the cows. Now, I'm going to suggest to Danielle, within parameters of safety and comfort, that she walk to the corner. And my guess is that Susie and Sela will move forward. Sela did. Sela did, Susie didn't. OK? If, we, if I was on horseback, I'd move in there. I'd be the turn back. But that's OK. Now, Sela's getting excited. That's the youngster. I'm going to go help on foot. Our mechanical uh, complication that we try to avoid, but for cow work, since you don't know where you're going to end up in the arena, how far away you're going to be from the camera, uh, the complication is worth the effort. Okay, and yeah, just walk up to them, not too close. Always think about where is strike zone for the cows, for the horses. And, and yeah, you need to be able to move Eve's hips. If she turns around and indicates kicking, you need to be able to move her hips to the left and to the right. Right now, move her hips before you do anything more. Good, good, good. See, now how are you going to move her hips without the right leg pressure? You've got to use your little dressage whip or horse crop. Okay, move hips both directions. Look, look over. That's it. Good. She's crossing over in the back. Very good. Are you comfortable? Yeah, she's better. She's a lot better with looking. She's a lot better where? With looking when she is with other pressures. She, like, she yeah. knows what to do. When right, she feels she's like, I don't need anything else. I yeah. do that a lot when I'm in side saddle and a stride saddle. I look where I want to go. I look with emphasis where I want to go before I even use any other cue because the horse can, it's amazing, can sense where you're looking and go there for you if they're willing. All right, let me have you move up to the two cows again. Okay. Now you either want to separate them, you want to turn them, you want to move them together, you want to move them individually. It depends what your purpose is in doing cow work. Uh, you want to mirror their movement, go along with them, or you want to rate them, you want to follow behind them. I would say this, Aniel, I would say walk to them and choose what you want to do because this is her first time. Do it, back off, always back away. Don't let a cow horse turn around in a U-turn, but back off, go over the haunches, and come back here and tell us what you wanted to do. If you didn't succeed, that's fine. There'll be many more lessons. Oh, no, she's like, oh, are we done yet? <laughs> My heifers are really great for training, and we always do cow simulators before we bring the heifers out if it's been a while, which we did. Okay, now her head's coming up. You want to like bump her down a little bit. She's getting excited. You want to keep her, yeah, you want to keep her vertically flexed if you can. Oh, her eyeballs are big. <laughs> good, good. If you feel that you've done what you want to do, just come over.
over here and tell us what you were trying to do and you noticed they got a little bit excited behind you, which could scare a horse. What were you trying to do? I was just trying to move them both. Susie was not having it, but Sela did well. Okay, Susie didn't move, but that's the mom. She often does that. Sela moved a little bit probably more than you wanted, but you know, that's okay. If your horse is desensitized to that kind of movement uh, and not think it's a spooky object, the horse can definitely, can definitely direct the movement of a cow if they've learned how to do it. And watch on RFD TV, uh, reining, watch uh, all kinds of cutting practices, and you'll see what a horse can do as long as the rider stays centered in the saddle and doesn't get in the way of the horse. That's a willing horse who knows what the objective is. So there you go. We've uh, shown you today how we're going to continue practicing and when we feel that. We can show you some progress. We'll add another session to this video. As a matter of fact, we may go back and do a session astride with Sadie, uh, Eve's daughter, because you've seen Semi, you've seen Eve, but you haven't seen Sadie recently do some cow work. Uh, but she's my youngster. We, we're very careful with Sadie because she can perceive things as being uh, uh, spooky and turn around and do what a horse naturally will do and uh, so we have to make sure that we are push button with Sadie's five body parts can move them out of the way in an eye blink and then everybody stays safe also you stay out of the kick zone of the cows which my cows don't kick very much uh, I've seen it maybe once or twice in five years but horses are more inclined to do that and Sadie, as a youngster, did do that. So we're being very, very careful. Safety is number one. So Kira, I hope you will somehow get a hold of a side saddle. Come here to Santa Cruz if you want to, and I'll give you some lessons. Uh, I hope that you will find the side saddle um, a tool that will allow you to keep riding your horse or horses uh, the way you want to ride them. Because being in a wheelchair shouldn't matter. Uh, you should be able to go on. You should be able to learn how to move uh, therapeutically, uh, move differently on the horse. As a matter of fact, keep an eye on Urban Cowgirl Show because my horses, my Morgan horses are so good that I am uh, attempting to organize some therapeutic riding here at Shadrach Farms. Today, our final session in part two is with Sadie in a flat saddle. We don't need the horn. We don't need the, the height of the right sits bone like in the, uh, in the side saddle. We just need good balance. We need good cues. We've got Sela, my youngster, in the arena. And you'll see her in a moment. But what I've been asking Anyel to do is to walk Sadie around a couple times going uh, over her haunches with a crossover. It's a safety feature. Remember that Sadie once years ago, uh, in her natural manner, kicked Susie. She didn't understand, and the rider at the time was a good rider, but Sadie didn't have push button over the haunches reactions. So let's go. Sadie is my best trail horse, by the way. She's my youngest horse. Every horse has uh, what they're better at. Derek, crossover. Did you get that? Derek. Yes. Okay. And Yell has the dressage whip in her hand just to help reach back if she needs it. She didn't cross over that time. Could you tell? Yeah. And Sadie is not as good at crossing over or moving her haunches by just looking. She's younger. She needs more training. There. There. Not quite as much crossover, but a little bit of crossover. Keep in mind that if they're turning over their haunches and crossing over with their back legs, they can't rear. They can't buck. They can't even bolt. They're busy stepping with their feet. Yes, but you've got to make sure that they understand the cue. Now, here's another thing. I mentioned it before. This is a whip. I'm not going to whip Sadie, but uh, I'm going to make a noise. See, she looks, look at her, Derek. She looks, 
says, what's that noise? Well, a lot of cowboys in Australia, some cowboys here in America use whips when they're out in the big herds moving them around. Rather than yelling and screaming or using ropes, they use whips. So I have trained my horses to accept this sound, even if you're in the saddle. But it's been a while, so I'm kind of showing you and telling you what we're going to do off camera, uh, weather permitting, and then when weather doesn't permit, we'll do it in this covered square pen. We're going to work on simulated cow work, mini zebu cow work with my Morgans. Uh, until we're ready, and this will be after, I hope, uh, I have recuperated from my right hip replacement, until we're ready to have two or three horses in the arena with my mini zebu heifers. Then we can turn back, we can get some speed going. Now, uh, go ahead and yell and walk towards Sela, keeping in mind that if Sadie, my youngest Morgan, feels the least bit threatened by Sela, she may turn around and try to kick her. It's nature. And notice that we have Sadie's Bozelle on her. We have three Bozelles. We actually have four, but three Bozelles that we want to use when all three of us come into the area where we're doing cow work. And we've got Rusty and Susie right outside the fence. That's why Sela isn't that good the way she's giving you over the haunches movements. That's good. We don't want Sadie to do U-turns. We want her to go over the haunches. Yes, that's actually good cutting practice. Good, very good. And there she goes. There's some speed now. Sadie might get excited. She's not. She's doing good. Now when Sela goes by, over the haunches. Yes. Okay, you've got yourself a challenge here. That's why we put Sela in this arena. She tends to move much faster than her mom, Susie. And I was a little bit concerned, will Sadie accept that excitement? She seems to. She seems to be fine. Are you okay, Anyel? Do you feel? Yeah, no problem, she says. Okay, remember, today is just a few minutes of show and tell. <clears throat> Using some tack that we haven't recently used. Using a flat saddle, who would think that you can do cow work in a flat saddle? Well, you know what? You can do cow work in no saddle. If you stay balanced and you have a horse who knows what is their job. And my horses are ranch versatile and they know what is their job. When you feel ready, just back off. Good, and that's what we wanted to show you. We're gonna do a whole lot more of that off camera and then come back maybe in spring and show you how good my Morgan horses can work my mini cows. See more at www.urbancowgirlchannel.com.